So my career started as a medical oncologist initially, um, and then I thought I should learn all of cancer, so I trained in radiation oncology at Stanford, and my training there was 1975 to 1978. So I've been doing radiation sciences for 40 years. Technology's gotten much more complicated. Um, the whole level of science, back in those days, science was incredibly simplistic for what we know right now. The idea of these cell survival curves, all the kind of stuff we're doing now was, was sort of created in the 50s. I mean, I was, I was alive when the structure of DNA was determined. So you look at the time framing of things, things are exponential, things happen more rapidly than people realize. We sort of think in linear terms because that's how we live our lives, but science is much more exponential. So you realize the, the complex stuff we're doing now, they were barely doing survival curves in the 19. 50s and the animal models were probably not to the 1960s and they were using cobalt therapy to the 1970s. A lot of it was driven by physics because it was physics and a lot of the modeling is done by physis physics. So radiation is sort of unique um, in that it's much more of a physics mathematically oriented specialty than almost any other. And it, and the big changes were have been in biology. Um, you know it used to take you five years to s figure out what one gene does and now you know, for a couple hundred dollars, you can find what every gene in the cell is doing. So I've been doing research pretty much for my whole career, which I think has made it a much more interesting career because you realize, every, as I tell my trainees, everything we're teaching you is basically wrong. They won't be doing this 100 years from now. And your job is to how to take what you do now and make it better to help people better. It's almost impossible to do altruistic work as part of careers these days. You have to do it, I say you can do it two days a week, uh, Saturday and Sunday, but it wasn't that way when I started out. People, ex these would be doctors would do pro bono work, it was expected to do pro bono work, and now that's not only not expected, it's actually held against you. So, so, I, so I think a lot of these issues are intertwined. You, you, need, you, you need opportunities to do your altruism and you train people in science, you do have some obligation. If you don't do that, then people start leaving these fields um, it's really sad. In general, most, most people, not all, want to do things to help others. Um, and I think there's that degree of altruism that needs to be tapped. You never want to lose your idealism. You, you just never let anybody take that away from you. You have to focus, you've got to earn a living, and you've got to feed your family, but you never want to lose your idealism and you never want to lose your integrity. I think you need mentors. Um, and, you need, and you need mentors who actually care about you. And I, I think some of the training um, motifs are, you know, someone wants a bunch of labor in their lab, and I think that's awful. Um, I think everybody, and I, I've been a department chair, I think everybody who comes to work for you, um, the higher up you are in an organization, the more people you work for, is, has been my model. So when you have people come to your lab, your job is to help them get the best career and, and, and point, point the way. So I think having mentors that you know, and also mentors at a higher level that you can interact with, I think is really important. Um, and yet, people have to realize they change direction. I mean, you know, you look at it, take a look at almost anybody's career, even in science, and every five or seven years, people shift directions or they change careers entirely. So changing what you do is actually part of what life's about. So it isn't the been there, done that. I really hate that. The answer is I've done this, this is great. Why don't you do this now, because it's a great job, and I'm gonna try to take my skills elsewhere. So I think young people need to be mentored. They need to realize there's ups and downs. It's the idea of the compassion, caring about people. Um, if you're truly worried about someone else's benefit, you'll, you'll really help them find the way forward. And listen to what they're telling you. you know? People gave their tax dollars or their money for us to try to help them with their problems. So I think in, in the aggregate, we should have some sense of what people's problems are that they need uh, being solved. They know a lot of what we do isn't going to pan out, and they know a lot of what we do um, is just focus on the science itself, and, and we get great respect for that. I, I think it's important to know what their issues are so you can address them and be compassionate with them. And we have a cherished role. I mean, we're there, we're there as people to give a, a clear, fair opinion. You know, and you never know. It's interesting when you work downtown, you don't know who's Republican and who's Democrat, and it, and it doesn't matter. People could care less about politics. It doesn't even get involved at all. You think it would be zero. Um, we have to solve a problem, how do we solve the problem together? Um, and that's what's so interesting about working in a, some of these councils. You know, the good thing about scientists is that they've taken a problem that no one ever had solved before and they realize that 
I'm smart enough to solve a problem that was never solved before. So once you've made that step one, you realize I can take on problems that don't have answers. Policy people, lawyers, a lot of them just don't understand how the creativity of the mind can enable you to solve problems that haven't been solved. Once you've done it, you'll take on hard problems. Once you've taken on hard problems, you'll take on even harder problems. So we have these scientists, I love the PhDs because they've given a project that didn't have an answer and they've done it. So you give them another project that doesn't have an answer and they know how to go about it. What's my question? What's my data? It's great to watch, watch them do it. It's, that's the joy of science in many ways. Even if we didn't have cancer, radiation is, is a major societal problem. So if cancer, we cured all of cancer, we'd still have to worry about radiation because it's part of our environment, it's part of our infrastructure, it's part of the universe, um, it's part of social engineering, energy issues. Um, so I think it's really, in, it's really important uh, you know, to sort of look at the whole big spectrum of, of the issues that we face.